Welcome back, everybody, and happy holiday time to you. We play role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition and more, and today, instead of being in the smelly streets of Darkhaven, we will be in the smelly streets of Darkhaven! Yay! Yay! But this time it's all Christmassy and shit. So, uh, I'm Luke, your DM, and with me is... Ben. I'm playing Cortain on this festive day. Peter, I'm playing Spigs and Denser. Let's see what state he's at today. Has Trav's mic died again or what? Nah, I just, I didn't know if it was my turn or not because I don't have the run to <laughs> <laughs> You said wing it. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's the Christmas episode, baby. Um, <laughs> hi everyone, it's uh, Trav here. I play Little Moss and um, Christmas greetings, Festivus to us all. Yeah, g'day all. It's Levi. I play Loki, and yeah, Christmas greetings. Good to be in your ear holes once again. Mm, ear holes, not eye holes. All right. So, um, because all of the special episodes generally take place in an ambiguous space and time, sometimes not even in the normal universe. Sometimes it is, uh, but we will be in Darkhaven in New Etika once again. So you are all. Sitting at a pub, carols are playing on a booth. I mean, a, a jukebox in the background. You are sitting in a booth. Pints of beer and ale, both full and empty, cover the table in front of you. Rings of condensation spot that table like a uh, like a, a print of an exotic creature's skin. All these different foods are being placed in front of you by um, Barb people both um you know the the what do you call them the drinks bitches or whatever you you degenerates call them in dark haven uh and servants that come up and place these large platters and plates of overflowing food heavenly angels that's what i call them oh beautiful these heavenly angels flutter over and place this a large bowl of peas and mashed potato and there's a uh, big chunks of haunches of some sort of chicken turkey and gravy and this halfling fellow who is a big fan <laughs> of you guys I thought, I thought there was like bits of a halfling fellow <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a halfling on the, the table with a ribs. <laughs> Well, first you have to, you guys have to fight over who takes the apple out of his mouth first. You know, he's where's, on the table like a roasted pig. Where's the uh, other half? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this halfling, this portly halfling fellow who's who is a big fan of you all, wanders over to the table. Now he's he's the owner of this fine establishment. His name is Brussel. He walks up. Hi, uh, how you going, fellas? Yeah, have you been? Yeah, you enjoyed the the spread. Yeah, it's top and ice, mate. Delicious. Fantastic. If you need anything, just um... more gravy. Brr. More. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Um, you, you over there. Uh, yes, Donald, bring some more gravy. Come on. As he calls out to one of the uh, heavenly angels fluttering, ar fluttering around in their bar outfits. So. You guys are sitting in this room, music is playing in the background. Rexo, the big hired muscle bodyguard that uh, Brussel uh, has inside at all times to make sure if any fights break out. He's standing there in the corner. He's a big orc with his arms crossed. He's got this tiny little Santa's hat sitting on his head and he's sort of grinning while looking around the room, just making sure everything's, you know, going to plan. No one's busting each other's heads in or anything like that. What's his name? His name is Rexo. Can I can I walk up to Rexo? Yeah, you can walk up to Rexo. And I um, I put down my beer like next to him, and I slap a fiver on the table, and I say, "Let's wrestle, arm wrestle, not like proper wrestle." Oh, I thought you liked the proper wrestling we we <laughs> did last time, last uh, last Chris. I mean, last holiday time. <laughs> We got all oiled up and we rummaged around in the in the basement. Yeah, we said we wouldn't talk about it, but all right, let's keep it classy. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Uh, what do you want, an arm wrestle? Yep. 
Yeah, uh, I guess that'll do. All right, um, uh, Brussel, Brussel, give me a five minute break, please. So he sits down at the table, putting his arm there and puts his hand forward ready for the arm wrestle. Roll a strength check for me. 17. Eight. You slam Rexo's hand to the table. The beer that you placed on there tips and he like tries to snatch it up with his left hand. Half of it spilling all over the floor. Looking at you, drinks the rest of the beer and says, Can we not do this in public? Maybe we can get together in a private time again and (laughs) do some sort of arm wrestle or some such thing. (sighs) Looking around, he looks a bit humiliated. You made it weird, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) As um, you walk through the pub back to the booth that the rest of your friends are at, you, um, you look over at... This, this feature of the pub because it has this strange feature it's not its layout or the way that it serves its drinks you know it's not serving them in jam jars or anything like that um, it's the strange feature is the bard a sad hunched person plays the piano along with the music of the jukebox and he's only known as the bard Never, no one's ever really seen his face because he has this hooded cowl but um for as long as you guys have came come here and anybody else that you've spoken to that's come to this pub, he's always just been here, the sad bard, known as Bard. Now, as you all sit there and you sip the beers and you eat the foods and you listen to the various songs played through the jukebox and along with the, uh, the bard playing the piano, you are having a merry old time. Hours go by and you're all getting pretty intoxicated. I mean, intoxicated, not intoxicated. And you're loving every minute of it. Except for um, Little Moss. Are you, are you drinking beers or are you still on the tonic waters? Nah, I'm back on the, back on the horse for Christmas time, baby. Oh, doesn't, right. Doesn't count. <laughs> it's cheat time. <laughs> As the night goes on and the feast continues, people come in and out of the bar... Rexo sort of stops some of the fans and and, um, the public from coming up and asking for pictures and autographs and that sort of thing. Um, Little Moss, as you are walking back to that table um, after getting another drink from the bar, can you roll a perception check for me? Um, Ten. Ten. Okay. You noticed a hooded man in the corner smoking a pipe and all you can see of his face is the lower half grizzled and covered in stubble he's wearing this grey green cloak and as you're looking over and towards him your friends are clanking their mugs together and you trip you fall backwards and the ring slips out of your pocket you reach up to grab the ring and it falls on your finger <laughs> turning you in no, doesn't, no, that doesn't happen <laughs> um, you just see this guy in the corner smoking a pipe you sit down at the oh. table yeah <laughs> Strider? Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stop the bartender. Who's that What's for? what was that movie from? Lord of the Rings of Happy Days or something, yeah? <laughs> yeah um, no, that was, the, that was the first one. Yeah. You begin to sip your beer while you're looking at this hooded man, little moss. And you start to feel a little dizzy. Things start to look fuzzy and you feel lightheaded. Oh man. Shouldn't have gone off the beers for so long. They're going, to, they're going to my head. You look towards your friends, Cortain. You look at Little Moss, and then you look to Lokag. Lokag is face first, face planted into his mashed potato and gravy. You look at Spigs. He is head is swung all the way back, and he's snoring. You look back at Little Moss, and he's staring at you. And then you just see green peas as your head hits the table too, Cortain. Little Moss, you're seeing all your friends dropping like flies. And you pick your 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 pint up and you look at it. And you see these little green floating things fizzing in the bottom of your beer. And you look over towards the bar. And then the bard stands up from his perch at the piano. 
everything goes silent and he pushes back his hood and you see this golden ball ball for a head. And then everything goes black. Oh no, we got roofied by Mysterio. <laughs> Did you really slam that drink down? Spigs. You hear the sound of bells. And then you hear the sound of tools, maybe? Tools? Is that tools? You're thinking, you know. The cold air bites your skin. And as you groggily open your eyes your head is tilted forward and you notice that you aren't wearing the clothes that you're wearing previously just seconds ago you're not quite sure how long you're out but you look around at your your body and you're wearing this stitched together roughly stitched together patchwork clothes these white beige colored tights are sort of um, stretched over your chicken walker legs and your top is this this green tunic with all these little bells and red squares and triangles all over it you look really you look like dazed elf. and you move your head and you feel this cap flapping around on top of your head and as your vision starts to open up and you look around the room, you see that you are in a, a room that's probably 15 feet by 20 feet. These steel welded walls. And they're painted very poorly to look like a wooden hall with a hearth and then some woodworking tools like a hammer, a lathe, uh, some chisels, and then some holiday yule decorations you look down at this chair that you're in and you're strapped to it and on the strap across your arms across your chest is this large brass padlock low cake you wake up and you look around the room you see it's painted Poorly, once again, snowy hills and tall green fir trees. The beautiful blue sky is painted roughly behind the trees. And as you look down, you notice that you're wearing these tights and purple, uh, purple tunic with these red and um, green shapes that have been stitched into it. And you move and you see these bells jiggling. Little Moss, you wake up as well. You see this room that is a starry night with this large white moon in the, uh, on, the, on the left wall and a shape silhouetted on the moon that looks like a, like a horse pulling a cart in the air. It's very strange. And Cortain, you sit up and you are in a room that looks like it's been painted to resemble piles of wrapped presents and now as you all look around at your surroundings you are all in separate rooms and you see this tv up in the right hand corner of the room near the ceiling and it's behind a cage as it flickers on and all of the lights above you in these cages flicker on and the room is cast in a harsh but dull white yellowy light now your mind starts to free from whatever drug knocked you out and then you notice the contraptions each of you so we're going to cut back to Spigs can you roll a perception check for me Spigs can do I was going to say why is the TV like cages because they don't want us to change the channel or turn them off <laughs> Uh, perception. Oh, I think Spigs took a bit too many, like had an extra one of those. Those are uh, beers. And uh, he rolled a six. Six. All right. You can see that you've been strapped down into an old wheelchair. You can see that large brass lock 
sort of um, locking those straps into place, holding you into the wheelchair. Now, the chair has been clamped to a small conveyor belt. There are a lot of these old plastic um, St. Nicholas's worker elves in various motions, like little statues of them using tools. Some are using hammer, some have like a uh, needle and thread, others have like a little um, screwdriver. And at the opposite end of the conveyor belt, there is a large circular saw. Between you and the saw, there are these large chunks of foam painted to look like tree logs. And that circular saw starts to spin slowly. As it starts to spin faster and faster and faster, the conveyor belt sort of lurches and slowly moves. You're looking around the room... And Lokag, I'll get you to roll a perception check for me. Nice. I got a 13. A 13. You were sat, chained into a small merry-go-round. The metal horses stink like old sweat and vomit. It's slowly moving and slightly picking up speed. You notice that there is a red-nosed animatronic reindeer that is holding some sort of water gun. Probably a few meters from you. Every now and then you see the gun sputter a sizzling yellow liquid that seems to burn the metal horses in front of it. Now besides the contraption, you see a metal pad with three glowing buttons of various colors next to um, a an aperture, probably five centimeters Um, wide that is opening and closing quite quickly uh, with a chonking sound and the area around the aperture is stained red. As you look down, you can see uh, Cortain uh, in the room beneath you. You can see like the top of his head. Um, He's sort of just sitting up from the ground and we'll cut to Cortain. Can you roll a perception check for me? Cortain. That was 11. 11, okay. Overhead, there are three steel sleds, and they're swinging in a pattern. Their blades are sharp, and they're whistling through the air. Around you are various sized gifts pushed up against the wall. As you look up, you see a slight light, but then it goes... A light past the actual uh, long bar lights of the room, but then it goes dark then. The hole disappears. Uh, Little Moss, can you roll a perception check for me? Thirteen. Thirteen. The room is filled with lumps of sweet-smelling snow. Beneath you is a grate, and you can see a conveyor belt with some weird statue elves below you. Your arms are shackled behind your back, and your shoes are ice skates that are connected to track-like um, machinery in the floor. And the tracks lead to and through each of these large lumps of snow. Now you notice that the snowy lumps are mi- made of marshmallow and cream. The shackles at your back are connected to a chain that runs to a large reel on the roof. And you hear the slight clinking of chain as the hanging length grows a little bit shorter. So, we will zip back to um, Lokag. Oi, Cortain! Where are we? This reindeer's trying to pee on me! Why am I on a merry-go-round? What? So, Cortain, you hear this... You hear the shouting of Lokag from somewhere above you. Am I able to, to look up, or am I restrained in such a way that I cannot? Ah, uh, you are not restrained at all. Not restrained at all. You're just sitting on the ground at the moment. But there are these. But there are these sleds with, like, swinging like play. Yeah, you know this like like snow sleds. How they have like the two sort of rails underneath that slides along the snow. They're like blades, and they're swinging. Like one go cuts sort of a uh, horizontally, one cuts vertically, and then one cuts diagonally across this. The, where the noise is coming from. This the voice of Lokag. But I'm not, I'm not restrained anyway, nor in any immediate danger. No, the sleds are about 
uh, 15 feet in the or 10 feet in the air and the room is 15 feet tall Lokag uh, I'm in some kind of room sounds like you're you're above me yeah and I'm in a room too with weird reindeers and a water pistol where yeah, are looks, we looks I don't know but there's 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 a, all these boxes like presents in here I start looking through the presents okay so you're going to open them yeah as you open, oh, no. as you open the first um, present, boom! I need you no. to roll a Constitution saving throw for it's me. Face, it's a face hugger. I got this one. A crit. A crit. Yes. As you open, you rip off the ribbon and you rip open the wrapping. You take the the top off this, the lid off this box. This yellow gas s- sprays, but you quickly turn your head and it just blows your hair about kind of glamorously um and you hold your breath instinctively you don't breathe in the gas these presents are filled with gas happy birthday (laughs) (laughs) let's cut to little moss oh not again you're in that room all these lumps of sweetly smelling marshmallow and um and cream so i've got ice skates on my feet huh yeah and you notice that there is a grate beneath you in the middle of the room a grate okay is there anything that i can see through the grate underneath roll of perception it's a little bit dark down there eight eight okay so you can see you can see the conveyor belt and some weird elf statues um, that's really about it. That's all that you can sort of see through there. Um, can I try and stand up and skate with the skates on? Yeah, you stand, but your feet are stuck in the track in these tracks, and there's no laces. The boots are like um, they're like uh, shrunken onto me or something. Uh, yeah, they're like strapped with a like a strange device that you need some sort of screwdriver to open it with. I look for a screwdriver. You can't see a screwdriver around you. Damn it, these you, guys are um, good. You hear the sound of a soaring blade beneath you. Mm, that, do- that doesn't sound good. Um, S- Spigs, you hear uh, Little Moss say, uh, Not again. And then moments later, That doesn't sound good. <laughs> it seems Spigs, to be coming from above you. Uh, Spigs is just remembering how we lost his leg the first time. So, <laughs> so Spigs sees the TV and then goes, Glist! To you, is this my early cr- Christmas present? Ah, oh, they're into some <laughs> weird shit. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just static on the screen. Ah, uh, well, what else? Can- Maybe it's uh, is this like some sort of escape rom? I don't know. Uh, hey, like, like, I don't know, escape room or something. I don't know. Um. Hey, is anybody watching? Like, this TV channel's pretty shit. You suddenly see the TV flicker from static to like a uh, really bad quality camera. And there's like this uh, sheet with all of these Christmas or holiday lights strung all across it. And then you see this little thin figure walk into the camera. Out. It's Alvin Man. Aki. Um, <laughs> you. He has these uh, large gar- goggles on that are black. You can't see his eyes. Got this very wispy white beard. It looks like it's been maybe like sprayed white. Looks like it could be black hair underneath it. And he grabs a microphone, puts it up to his mouth, and goes, "Welcome, heroes." Thank you for coming to my Yule party. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Ah, oh, yeah, I can hear you. Hello? 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 Okay, good, good. Welcome, heroes. Change the channel! Uh, thank you for taking the time to come to my Yule party. Um, I didn't know we were invited. Would have brought a gift. <laughs> um, oh. Are you guys talking? I can't hear you. Hi, hello? We're here. Yeah, we're, we're here. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. He, He's using the he same crouches down. <laughs> <laughs> he crouches down and you hear him clicking some buttons. Oh, 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, I was just saying. Yeah, we can always hear you. Okay, cool, fine. I can hear you. You will all notice. Oh, I should start again. Um, welcome, heroes. Thank you for taking the time to come to my Yule party. You will notice um, that each of you are in a room, a special room (laughs) to test your brains and your brawn. Each of you are in peril, because that's what heroes are. They're always around perilous things. But you are all fantastic heroes. I saw you on the television, so you would for sure be able to get yourself out of this spot of travel. Two of you are in more, uh, a more deadly predicament than the other two. Um, but that is isn't not to say that the others of you aren't, uh, I mean, are safe from harm, because you're, you're not safe from harm. Um, no, because that wouldn't really be testing you, would it? Um... I'm kind of, uh, excuse I'm kind me. of going on now. Um, but anyway, so here it goes. Excuse uh, me. Yes. Am I in greater peril than the others? Um, Just asking for a friend. My peril, the box. Um, you look. Let me get through this uh, introduction. How, how many? How many hints do we get? Uh, <laughs> you can't say that I'm in great peril and then say, "Let me finish." Uh, I mean. Is this your first time doing something like this? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, let me get to the the, the Yule rules. <laughs> That's what I call them, the Yule rules. <laughs> I would have called them Yules. Uh, good one. Anyway, good one, go little moss. Uh, hey, you can hear, you two can hear each other. Oh yes, that's right. I've, I I have um, set up microphones for the entire place. It's all connected correctly. Good. <laughs> I didn't think that would work. Anyway, a uh, Spigston, Spigston Denser, the dwarf from Darkhaven, the the father and the husband warrior. You, uh, you will notice that you are in a deviously designed contraption. You are in Saint Nicholas's workshop, and all of his elves are watching you as you zip along towards the saw, which. If you don't unlock your bindings, it will slice you into two pieces. I was going to say two very thin pieces, but that's not really the case because I, yeah, um, which um, nobody wants to see. Wait, you because is that um, a white joke? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, we don't want to see you sliced in twain. Um, so somebody. Uh, maybe somebody above you will have to find the key. But the key, it is hidden, isn't it? Oh, that's a part of the game. Uh, little Moss, you better be hungry because the key is hidden in one of those delicious mounds of sugar and dairy. You better get munching or your friend Spigs here will be nothing more than old split timber. Oh, and um, the piles are laced with one of my most favorite ingredients. Um, narcotics. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> I immediately, uh, I immediately start like hoovering it up, like. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. Low cag. Um, you're new, uh, so I had to quickly devise a room. Um, then I got the rooms mixed up, but either way, uh, it should work. Is uh, it an so easy your... one? Uh, uh, which a broad one. Uh, reindeer. reindeer, reindeer, and three buttons. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, uh, you've already seen the button things. Damn it! Maybe I shouldn't have made them glow. Um, <laughs> uh, you would notice that um, Rudan, the reindeer, has a, his water blaster 8000. It, it is filled with um, not, not the essence of life. No, no, no water here. It is filled. Reindeer with pee. Urine. Mm, close. Um, it is a steel corroding acid used to melt iron in factories. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm not made out of metal, so that's be fine. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, maybe I should have got flesh melting acid then. Oh, I'll have to rethink that for next time. Um, anyway, the machine will start off slow, but then it will pick up some speed. And uh, the faster it goes, the more frequent the reindeer will spray his urine cannon. I mean, acid cannon. Uh, so, Cortain, you better be quick getting up to the top of the ceiling and pressing the correct combination, or your new pal will, I mean, your new pal will be simply dripping in pain. Get it? Because the acid is all drippy. Uh, um, but you must be nimble, and you must be quick, or you'll have your hand uh, sliced off um, uh, or something. Um, it didn't really rhyme because it was last minute, so... Is that a joke of my hand that got cut off? 
Like, oh, like, I never knew that. like the <laughs> that's um, like the wick of a candlestick. Ah, that's the quick part. Um, uh, so, Cortain, you have to find out the combination. There's no candles involved, unfortunately. I missed out on that little piece of uh, trivia there. Um, Lokeg uh, will read out some fun little riddles that you must solve them um, to find the correct gifts and presents, which has the combination. Uh, but don't go opening up all the presents because you'll have nothing to climb on. Uh, I think that's all have I got. Yes, that's everything on the list. Oh, um, if you succeed and don't die, uh, the door will automatically open for you and you can come through and find um, a piece of a puzzle, which then you can bring to me. And yes? What do we, what do we call you? Um, you can call me my, by my name, Mop. Mop? Uh, Mop, yes. I'm just, just gonna point out that, uh, some of these, these elves here are poorly designed. Like, that one's hammering like a screw. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, stop, stop, <laughs> um, stop insulting me, Speaks. I'm pressing the faster button. Click, 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 click. It's not working, but um, you'll be moving soon enough. As you start to jolt on the conveyor belt and the chair moves closer towards the the big saw that's uh, sort of churning quicker and quicker and quicker and cutting up the foam logs and shredding them into a thousand bits of fluffy white puffs. I get some of that white uh, Christmas get... snow on my snout. Is that a good <laughs> trick? <laughs> Um, can I get everyone to roll initiative and then we can go from yeah. four for fourteen. Fourteen is a four. Fourteen. Fourteen. Eleven for Moss. <coughs> Twenty-three for Lokag. Yep. Mm. Ten for Speaks. Cool. So, Lokag. It is your turn. You are moving quickly. Oh, not quickly. You're starting to pick up speed on this merry-go-round and you come up towards the reindeer and nothing happens. But you hear a few horses behind you, a spray and a hissing, sizzling sound. As you look over your shoulder, you see half of the horse starting to just melt and slop away from the acid. Um, can I get you to roll a uh, constitution saving throw from the fumes that are pluming up into the room from the burning steel of the horse? You can, and I got a 21. Nice. You breathe in the fumes. This has got nothing on some of the raider bombs that you had encountered in the wastelands. It's actually quite pleasant, those fumes, in comparison to some of the bombs that you've had to run through while fighting raiders. It's got Next a nice lavender have... smell. <laughs> Is that it's like, Next it's like deodorant or something? Mm, little moss. So, Little Moss, you in that room with all those lumps and mounds of marshmallow and snow. It's hoovering, man. Just like, is there one right near me? There is one right near you. Om nom nom, baby. All right. Roll a, um, once again, roll a constitution saving throw to see if you can eat the entire mound. Uh, 22. 22. All right. You get through one of the mounds and you move. there's no key. You eat basically the whole thing. There's just this sticky residue and creamy residue on the ground on the sturdy steel plating. And you just move on to the next one. You nom through that and you think you find something and it's just a toy race car. Can I slip the toy race car into my pocket? You can. Thank you. There is no pockets on your tights, your leggings that you're wearing, but you can tuck it in the waistband. I'm just going to shove it like straight down the front. Nice. Cool. Next to your bulge, there is a little race car. And then there is the or the toy that you stuffed down there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spigs, it is your turn. You are jolting closer down this conveyor belt towards the big saw. Uh, so, so both... Uh, so obviously Spigs missing one arm. 
one hand, and um, the other one. Are they both tied onto this this wheelchair, like tied down? Yeah, on the on the there's like the armrests. Yep. You're strapped across the arms, across the waist, and the legs, and then there's like another strap that comes up, crisscrossing through all of those, and then there's a big brass lock on your chest. Yep. That's, uh, that's how the how tight is the arm straps? Uh, you cannot move your arms yet. Uh-uh. You can roll a strength yep. to try and get free if you wish. Speaks will try to do that. All right. Strength, strength. Fifteen. All right. So you pull and pull and pull. You can't quite get um, your arms free. But with your robotic legs, you you're able to sort of stretch the um, the straps of the chair enough to um, to give you some wiggle room in your legs area and your like toes area, your feet. He's got toes Next, now. Next, we have his robo toes. His robos, ro toes. Um, f- fourteen, Cortain, It is your turn, sir. Uh, so I look around, and he mentioned that if I open up the boxes, I can't use them to climb. That box yes. that I just opened, can I just put the lid back on? You certainly can. It explodes. Put the lid back on. <laughs> the it is all soggy from when you've opened it, oh. and the contraption has gone off. All the uh, cardboard of the box is misshapen, sort of falling apart in your hands. Is there any? markings on the boxes or like anything to differentiate them from each other roll an investigation for me oh, i will it won't be spectacular but <laughs> oh, that's not bad 14 14 as you're looking through the boxes um they've all got like um sort of tags on them and all different random names and such you come across one with a um a little like a little symbol instead of a name a crudely drawed drawn I should say light bulb it's a, it's a it's a red light bulb okay and we will go back to uh Lokak. so as you're moving around the merry-go-round on the TV it flicks up some words and the words read what has to be broken before you can use it? Oi, Cortain. The riddle is what has to be broken before you can use it. So if you've got a box down there that describes that, you look for the boxes and see any, like, pictures or whatnot. You got anything? Um, I mean, there's a red light bulb on a Do box you have to here, break but- a light bulb? Maybe it's like a flare. Is it a flare? Is, is it a flare or is it a light bulb? It is a light bulb. That's not a flare. That's not, what if it's like a glow stick? Well, that's like a flare, but that's still not what the picture is. Look uh, at the other boxes, and I'll, I'll think about what this broken thing could be. Okay. It's got to be broken before you can use it. A horse. It's a horse, right? Hmm. I don't know. I'll think about this. So, we go to Little Moss. Um, am I being dragged along by the track and the chain? No, the chain is just connected to your arms behind your back and leading to the roof. And every now and then it sort of clicks it up and you can't lift your feet out of the tracks. You're in these ice skates that are like stuck in the tracks. So how do I... You can't lift them. How do I get the... Can I do an investigation check as to how I can get the ice skates to move? So I can go to the uh, next you're, mound. You're able, to, you're able to slide them along in the track. You don't really need to work that out. That's fine. I, re- um, I don't really need to work that out. I'd like to slide along to the next mound and nom nom nom. All right. Um, as the chain is clinking, um, you feel... Or you see the, the, train, the chain that's it was slack and it's getting kind of tight. And you put together that if you don't hurry... Um, that the chain will pull you tight, and your legs are stuck in the tracks. So then I'll be like a, either your f- like a delicious cheese and bacon pull apart from Baker's Delight. 
Yeah, either your feet or your arms will come off. One of the two. Um, so you can you roll a, um, a dexterity to see how quickly you can get to the mounds and nom them. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. You make it through another two mounds. Uh, roll a d20 for me. 14. You start to feel really sad. But you look down at your, um, your, your, your chest is covered in all of this cream and marshmallow. That doesn't usually make and me sad. Out of your chest and your stomach, these hands come out. These large hands. So you've now got your two arms behind your back and then these four hands just sticking out <laughs> of your your body and they're wriggling their fingers around. And then you look at them and in the center of the palms, eyeballs open out and little mouths underneath the eyeballs and they're like give us some food give us the marshmallows give us the cream and you start to numb through more of them not, a, um, not again <laughs> roll a uh, roll another d20 for me I am doing a lot of rolling here compared to everyone else by the way um two you've eaten four mounds of narcotic laced dairy and um and a two? Yeah, I call that a Wednesday. Um, yeah. As you're as you're chowing two. through one of the mounds, you choke on something and you spit it out and there's like half of a hot dog in your hand. And you look down and out of all of the rest of the mounds, there are probably like four more left. There are all these angry little hot dogs jump out. Um, they've got little arms and legs and little angry teeth on them and they start swearing at you on, in all of these these little vulgar terms in different languages. Can I get um, can I get my eyeball hands to flip them off? You can't control your eyeball hands. They won't do what you want. Uh, They're now high-fiving each other as you're choking on some sausage. Uh, let's move to Spigs. So Spigs, you're able to wiggle your feet free. Um, you're getting closer and closer to the saw. What do you want to do? Um, so Spigs, well, he's going to yell out to. Uh, can you talk to the rest of them, or just to um, Little Moss? You can talk to the rest of them, but you just know that um, you heard Little Moss's voice above yeah. you. Uh, Little Moss. Um, where the others, are, the others are coming through like speakers on the TV. Little Moss. You found that key? The boss? Oh, shit. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so. He's probably already dead. So he just. Speaks tries to. He needs to get at least. He's got a plan. He needs to get his. At least one of his, his good hand out. So you're gonna try and do another, like. Pull on. Pull on the. Whatever's holding it down. Cool. So, do you want to use a strength or a sleight of hand to do it? Uh, is it is it loose enough for him to move? No, not really. But I mean, like you can try and wiggle it free with yeah, like, yeah. hand cool. movements I'll do and the sleight of hand, or you can try and like rip it free. you will try and like I don't know, like squeeze out. All right. Sleight of hand. Yep. Nineteen. 19 so you're like trying to free your hands from the straps and you think back to this movie that you saw and you like slowly shake your head as you like twist your hand in such a way that you hear your wrist pop and then you just slip out your right hand uh, your uh, sorry your left hand because your right one is um your robotic one that um like that is still it's still there but your the cybernetics isn't functioning yeah so you 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 basically break your thumb and you slide out of the constraint with your hand oh pop and lock um can you just roll a constitution saving throw for me to see how you tolerate the pain oh i rolled a 19 plus 7 26 nice 
You just bite through it. You've been through worse pain than th than this with your legs. But you are still moving closer towards the saw. And we cut to Cortain. Yeah, I want to look through more of these uh, these boxes. Presents. You want to open them, look through, or no, as in look, the look, tags? look on the tags. All right. Uh, roll a uh, perception or investigation. Oh no, a six. You find a name with on the box that says "but." B U double T. Break it. it. Does have a hole in it. <laughs> in some way, it is broken. Cortain <coughs> will call. Lokag, do you think it might be a butt? Uh, no. How do you no. break a butt? <laughs> but I've never broken my butt, and I use it plenty of times. But it's no. got like a hole in it, <laughs> and then poop goes through it. But it's not broken, is it? It's got a well, crack. It's got a, most. It's got a crack in it. It's, it's got a. Can I can I hear that? Can I hear? Yeah, through the speakers. Yeah. We've said yeah, this. It's got a crack that. in it. See, it's broken. <laughs> I'm gonna open it just in case. Don't open, open, it. open it. Don't open, open it. The, open the butt box. All right, make a dexterity saving throw. Four. <laughs> oh no. I'm pretty sure. I'm the... pretty sure I'm right. I don't even need to duck out of the way just in case. <laughs> <laughs> out of the box comes this. Um, it looks like a, a like a, a boxing glove. It punches out at you from this mechanic with his mechanical arm, but it's not like a soft uh, sort of plushy material like a boxing glove is. It's made of like solid stone. It's just painted red. It's like a, a, a garden ornament of some sort. It slams you in the face. Oh. You fall backwards. Um, roll a d20 for me. A two. A two. You fall back into one of the other boxes. Um, and roll a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, 23. It smells like rotten eggs as you slam into this box and all of this green gas starts to pile out, out of it and fill the room. But you um, hold your nose and you do not vomit. Uh, next is Lokag. Lokag, as you're spinning around, um, make a dexterity saving throw for me. Uh, oh, I got a crit, so yeah. The acid sprays at you, and you like um, tango dance. You know when they like sort of go really low to the ground, uh, like, like limbo. When, yeah, like the you limbo yeah. back as this acid sprays past, hitting some of the pole of this merry-go-round horse that you're being chained to. As the pole starts to um, sort of eat away and melt on the screen you see something else pop up and it says what do you call a snowman in summer Gortain what do you call a snowman in summer it's a puddle but the, that's not the answer what do you call a snowman in summer fucked also canon I'm the limbo champion now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cortain, you hear him yell out, what do you call a snowman in summer? A puddle, that's not the answer. Or, so, or something of the like. Whatever lo whatever Lokeg said, you hear him shout that out. You see, Cortain, you see a... Um, a little picture on one of the boxes as you're laying there on the tag. And it is a sort of blue... We a little blue weird shape with a boot standing in it and there's all these splashes coming out of the blue shape. Nah, that can't be it. Nah, is it? He Next, said it was wrong. It said boot. That's a boot. Nah. Next we have Little Moss. So, three more of these piles left. I want you to roll a um, constitution for me to see if you feel sick or not. Uh, 18. 18. You could probably eat some more. Do you want to eat some more? It's double down, baby! Alright, uh, roll 3d20s for me and tell me the 
uh, each of the the uh, rolls. Oh dear. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. Nine. Nine. Five. Five. Okay. So there are these three next to you. You start like eating three of them all at once. You can reach them all, and you're just slamming each of them into your mouth and trying to eat them. The first one that you got on the left, you feel this little metal shape in amongst all the marshmallow. And you quickly dig through and you find this large brass key covered in this sticky marshmallow. Nice. Roll a d20 for me. Oh. 13. 13? Lucky for some. As you... As you are, um... Going to pick up this brass key with your mouth, all of those hands start to try and slap it out of your out of your teeth as you're um, trying to pick it up, and they're all laughing and giggling <laughs> as they're trying to slap it out of your mouth. And I give each one um, of them a high five and intercept them. You can't. Your hands are behind your back. Damn it! With my imaginary hand. No. As you look, you have these hands coming out of your shoulders made of marshmallow. These sloppy hands, a chewed marshmallow. And they grab and high-five the other hands to keep them busy as you skate your way back to the grate. As you look down, you see um, Spigs break his own wrist and pull it free of the straps. Um, Roll a dexterity to see if you can drop the key through the grate. Pretty good. Better be. Oh, no, 19. No, 20. 20. Ghetto crit. Spigs, as you break free of your restraint and you click your thumb and wrist back into place, this key drops down, lands on your forehead. It is covered in saliva that drips down your face oh. and sticky marshmallow. You're welcome. As you look up, you see a little moss there. His eyes are like dinner plates. There's like no whites left of them. They're that big. And he's just drooling and his whole face is covered in sticky marshmallow and he's just dripping with cream. So. Dirks. Spigs. Um, and then it's your Spigs, turn. with his free hand, grabs the key off his head. Um, and then... Puts it in the the brass lock, and he turns the lock, the key in the lock. As you turn the lock, it pops open. The conveyor belt shudders and stops. The saw stops spinning, and it's probably just a, almost a meter away. And you can free yourself from the straps. As you do that, your mechanical hand starts working again as you feel this electro buzz power down. On your screen, there is a tick. Bling! And it says on the screen in green text underneath the tick, a hint for Cortain. And it just has a it's picture not the butt. of an egg. <laughs> Uh, Cortain. Cortain? Yep. It could be some... Is it? What? Is that you, Spigs? It's me. It's Spigston. Uh, I, I, I beat my thing, and it reckons you need to find some sort of oval-shaped thing with a crack in it. Maybe an egg? Okay, I'll have a look for an, for an egg. Cortain, it is your turn. Is there, are, are all the presents just kind of like, you know, boxes? Or is there, are there different shaped presents as well? And one needs to be an egg shape. No, they're all various sized rectangular or square shaped boxes. Okay, and you said that before I just saw a, a, a blue, was it a blue boot? 
with it was a boot standing in like a blue um body of water with some splashes coming out of it okay i yell out there there's some kind of puddle with a like a boot in it lokag what? is that what is that one of them like a summer snowman who melted into a puddle yeah but there's a boot as well yeah maybe i don't know i don't know how this guy's an artist maybe he just wanted boots i reckon that's a goer uh, did he say open them or don't open the good ones uh, i think i think i had to open them because if i opened the wrong ones and too many i wouldn't have enough boxes to stack and reach you yeah okay then i uh, open the the puddle i open the puddle you rip open the present and inside there is a red card that has Ooh. a um, a little picture of a a red button and the number th- three on it. There's a little card with a red button and the number three. Lokeg, as you look down at that little pad that's welded onto the ground next to the open and closing aperture you see the three buttons. There is a yellow, a red, and a green. Maybe that means the red button is the third button to be pressed? Or I've got to smack it three times. Maybe, but what if you have to smack the other ones first? Well, it's not a- You can't reach it, Lukag. Yeah, I know, it's your job anyway, Cortain. A voice in my head. You gotta get up here, you gotta figure out the code, then get up here and not get chopped to bits. Yeah. I just gotta read. I just get a little fun little merry-go-round. I love this game. <laughs> do, do, so, do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. So, um, so there's also and then. Oh, no, actually, sorry, is it someone else's turn now? Uh, I'll get you to roll uh, one more perception for me. I'm still really high. Oh no, that was, that was good. <laughs> a two. Two? Sure it wasn't cocked. Basically <laughs> what you start doing is you pick every box you pick up, you look at the tag, when it just has a name instead of a picture or a hint or anything on there, you just throw it into the center of the room and you can, and that's just that's how you're doing uh, trial and error at the moment. You're grabbing every box and there's a lot of them and you're throwing them. Uh, you go to grab a box and your hands just slam into the wall and you realize it's one of the, the painted on uh, presence, and you're really happy that nobody else saw that happen. Uh, Lokag, you're in the uh, merry-go-round. Roll a dexterity saving throw for me again. Um, does 16 succeed, or should I roll my advantage? Uh, that will succeed. You dodge again as it sprays. Um, let me roll <laughs> The pole snaps as the acid burns through it, and my pole. You, yep, and your gonna... horse tips to the side. Cortain, I'm falling you can, over. You can probably reach the button now if you time it correctly. And you notice on the screen another riddle pops up. I come in many colors, so beautiful and bright. I turn so many houses into a beautiful sight. What am I? Oh, it's a rainbow! Look for a rainbow! Or the... I... I'm gonna... I... Colours bright! Um, I turn houses into beautiful sights. It could be a fire! It could be houses on fire or a rainbow. (laughs) Houses on fire is a beautiful sight. They are! They're beautiful. Uh, also, this guy, th- this guy's thing broke, and I, I, it wasn't me. So he's got to come get some guys to fix it. Little Moss, know. it is your turn, and you drop the key, and then you feel the buckles on your boots pop open, and the chain drops from the ceiling, connects to the floor. Your shackles pop open as well and the lights on the mechanical apparatus on the uh, boots and the shackles just goes dull. Uh, You look around the room, but you're not in that room anymore. You're on this 
large, long green plain of grassy hills and this blue background. These large colored squares begin to fly down from the sky. Um, oh, can I ride them? And they begin to arrange themselves. Red in the top left corner, green in the top right, blue in the bottom left corner, and yellow in the bottom right corner. And they wave almost like a, a flag. And then those four squares spin in a circle and then fly away. And then this little um, paperclip guy with eyeballs pops up and he's like, Hey, I heard you needed help. I'm, I'm writing a letter. Ah, you need help with writing a letter, hey? I'm pretty good at punctuation. Oh, thank Do you need help? Thank God you're here. Um, where am I? You are in the beautiful world of Windows XP. Oh, wow. Look around you. I, I, now, I heard some things that were being shouted out before. Uh, some sort of puzzles. I like puzzles. Um... You want to give me one of your puzzles and I can work it out for you. Um, I can help. So, something that has many colors that improves a house. Hmm. I, I mean, I think it's Christmas lights. What do you reckon, Paperclip? Something that has many colors and improves a house. A house with Christmas lights would be pretty... A pretty beautiful sight. I know, right? I would say lock it in. I, I, I lock it. Can you lock it in? Yeah, oh. absolutely, friend. All right. And he uh, spins in a circle and he disappears. What a lovely guy. You guys, you guys in the other room hear little moss yelling about how Christmas lights make a house be beautiful. Not to burn the house down, just put Christmas lights on it. You don't need to burn it anymore, just put the Christmas lights on. He's constantly screaming this out to you. Uh, Cortain, you see this box that you saw before with this coloured globe on there. And now that you think of it, it kind of looks like a Christmas light globe. But it's only red. It's not multiple colours. Shut up. <laughs> Red fires are red. It could be a red fire globe. Uh, I'm, Look, I'm, you open every other damn box. Just open that one anyway. <laughs> I'll, I open the box. All I'm right. Inside, there is a card with a green square on it, a green button that has the number two written on it. How many colors are there in the panel? Three. Three. Yellow, red, and green. There's, there's a, I've got a card, a green card with the number two. So it's, it's, it's a red circle for three and a green square for two. Cool. The other one must be one, unless I've got to smack it heaps of times. I'll see if I can swing around and do the yellow, green, red next time. That would be good. I've been hit in the face. I don't think I'm good <laughs> to, to, you know, avoid blades. All right, so, Lokag, roll a uh, sleight of hand as you swing around on the merry-go-round to see if you can press the buttons in the right combination. 14. 14. You press yellow. Good. You press green. And then your finger just brushes over the red. You see it light up, though. You must have pressed it hard enough as the aperture... Closes completely. The merry-go-round stops. The animatronic reindeer puts its arms up in the air, throwing the gun, the acid going everywhere, melting all over the animatronic reindeer, melting its cr cruddy-looking fur and the, the robotics beneath. There's not all a lot of replay value here, but that was cool. As you guys finish your rooms, you see your TVs just come bing with a tick. Little Moss, you're in this XP world. And I never want to leave. You're running around over the grass hills as all of these flowers start to fly up in the air, wave to you. 
and say goodbye as they fly towards <laughs> the moon. And then all of a sudden, you're sprayed. There's this all this white spray spraying you. And then you shake your head and you sort of come to, you clear out of this narcotic frenzy that you're in. And you're in that room again. Your skates are off, the shackles are off. Uh, you're covered in marshmallow and cream and this door slides open amongst all of the metal panels. Slides. Four of them. Lights come on down the hallway. These blinking sort of Christmas lights of various colours and at the end of the hall you see this large door and on the door there is a piece of um, a limb, a robotic limb quite large probably as large as the door and as you guys walk down the hallways you see these large red robotic limbs with black boots black gloves and around the cuffs is this white fur and as you get closer the doors swing away from you and out into the room and then you see this massive dome-like room and you all walk out from various um, areas of the dome and see each other you're all dressed up as different coloured elves with these different coloured hats on little moss is covered in marshmallow and cream um Cortain has two really black eyes and a blood nose um Spigs is nursing his wrist and Lokag has like little spots of sizzle still like tss, running steam coming off his arms from where he just got sprayed a little bit as he dodged them and all of these limbs that were on those doors are pulled into the center of the room by these large uh, sort of tentacle-like robot arms that come down, pull the legs off, and then into the shadows, connect them into something as you see these sparks fly out. And then these lights come on in this this um, Christmas tree-like shape. And they light up this huge robot. In its face, there is this TV screen. But it's not static or anything, it's actually just a glass covering. And inside is this little elf man with this badly sprayed white beard and um, these large black goggles. And he presses a button on the goggles, one goes green, one goes red, and then they start to change, flash different colors. And stepping forward out of those shadows is this huge... Saint Nicholas robot. The legs and arms that have just been connected, they start to just like power on. And he grabs this large sack from the side of from from his side and it goes into a stance this robot. He swings the the bag over his shoulder and you hear you succeeded at solving my puzzle. Now you must defeat me in my St. Nicholas mech. Prepare to meet your doom. If I defeat you, I shall be the ultimate hero. The ultimate hero! And then everything everything slows down to slow motion. Damn you, slow Mobius. And you guys look around the room as your adrenaline kicks in and you see different things on the ground you see a large orange and red toy revolver you see one six foot long bent iron pole painted red and white there is a tin shield painted and shaped to look like a gingerbread man a large nut cracking tool that is two handed it's that big it's just huge you see a blue and green plastic looking sword and a grenade as time speeds up he says oh shit I forgot to put away my grenade. Uh, can you leave that alone, please? I need it for another puzzle that I've planned for later. Thanks. And we'll go into battle quickly. So, um, let's put him in there. I definitely want the nutcracker for tank cars. Ooh. Oh, First off, candy pole, then. I'm going to keep the initiative. Lokag, what do you want to take? 
Well, I know what Little Moss wants, so I'm going for the candy pole. <laughs> you pick up the big candy pole. It could, um, it's six foot long, but you can hold it in one hand. Ooh. You want to take anything else? The grenade. Oh, uh, no. Oh, sure, I'll take the grenade. Yeah. You pick up the grenade. Then, like, use it so, like a baseball bat and hit it at him. It would be great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you want to do, Lakeg? It's your turn. Uh, you, so you pick up your weapon. Your decision, by the way. I'll, I'll go with that. I'll just right <laughs> off the bat. I'm going to... Um, right off the bat. Like, that's great. Flick it up. Throw the golf, the the um, the um grenade up with my left hand and then with grab my bat with both hands and swing playing cricket and smacking that grenade obviously i like activated it and just smack that grenade towards this giant mecca all right i'm happy that you said you activated it um, <laughs> so you press the button on the grenade throw it up you swing your large candy pole uh roll a uh like a like a normal attack or a, or a um strength or athletics for me whichever one you want um, unarmed strikes got plus seven. Ooh. I'm gonna do math. Seven plus seven is twenty-four. <laughs> what? Well, seventeen oh. plus seven, but you didn't oh. get the ten. <laughs> okay, so oh, all right. You smack the grenade, and it flies towards this large robotic Santa. He's, as he's swinging the bag over, he's not even ready. He's not even ready for this. The grenade comes flying in. It smacks into the glass sort of um, TV visor of this Santa Claus's head. It bounces off and explodes. There is this big boom and everyone goes deaf for a moment as sound kicks back in. And you guys all sort of like open your eyes as the, the smoke and the fire clears. You see the beard has completely been burnt from this white wool to this crispy black gnarled fur and the santa is stumbling uh swaying on its feet uh it's the the santa robot's turn he swings the bag at you locag uh he got a crit um he hits me it it does 25 damage as he hits you with this bag that is just has some sort of solid metal block in there you go flying 10 feet, landing on the ground in a heap. Next is Little Moss. Speaking so. speaking of the bag, um, yep. I pick up the nutcracker. Ah, nice, the bag. Mm. Ball, ball bag. Yep. Nice. Slide, yep. A, nice. slide underneath as he's gone for a swing at Lokag and then, yep. and then try and drive the nutcracker up into his nutcracker. All right, roll a uh, roll an attack or an athletics. Gonna roll athletics because it's a ghetto crit. Oh, nice! All right, you swing the nutcracker up, and there is this huge clang. The Santa rocks backwards. The hands like drop the bag as it goes to hold its crotch, and then then you hear oh didn't actually hurt my crotch and then you see like all of these sparks firing out between its legs as one of the one of the legs shuts down completely oh shit right in the baubles uh, it is spig's turn now spig's is going to pick up the pea shooter yep and he's going to just see where, like, there's a weak point. Like, maybe in one of his legs, like, joints or whatever. Yep. Uh, do you want me to roll, like, a... Was it survival mechanic? Yeah, roll a, um... Yeah, mechanical check. Cool. Uh, that's... F 17. Alright, you find a weak point. Would you like to fire Yes. It? Okay. So roll a uh, ranged attack or a dexterity check for me, whichever one is better. Uh, I rolled a 19 plus 2, so 21. 21. You point. First you point at the leg, 
and then you look up at the TV screen where it's just glass and you point up there and you fire three times. This little yellow and uh, orange foam dart flies out, slams into the glass. The second one, a little foam dart flies out and slams into the glass. The third one flies out, slams into the glass and you realize it was a real bullet. It punches through the glass and you hear, The Santa sort of falls to its knees a little bit and um, its hand moves up, gripping its like chest area. All of these um, little darts that you had shot are just like wobbling on the glass. Cortain, it's your turn. Nice. I will run and of course get the sword and the shield. All right, you run, you scoop them up. Little Moss is like still like sort of crouched down as he's just swung up, smacked it in the groin. Spigs has fired three times into the the glass of this thing. Um, you run, jump off Little Moss's back into the air. What are you doing? I so you said it stumbled back a little bit. Yeah, and it crouched down sort of on on one knee as it's holding its Would chest. Would I be able to leap? into the into the screen into the co- cockpit cockpit you probably couldn't can't quite fit it's like the tv area the the, green, the screen area isn't completely huge like you could see the guy's face uh and chest but that's, would i be that's able to just it. dive at it and shove the sword straight like you know just try to oh yeah absolutely just, just murder the guy roll an attack or an athletics uh, that is 16. All right, as you leap up and you thrust the sword into the glass, the hand that was on his chest goes to punch up in the air and you block it with the sort of tin shield shaped as the gingerbread man. And then you stab through the glass and you hear another scream. Ah! You land on the ground. Lokag, you pick yourself up. You come back, walk over towards the group. All four of you are standing there as this large robotic Santa Claus is like wiggling its arms and sparks are flying out of it like in the Power Rangers. Yeah. It falls to its knees. It explodes in a shower of sparks and shrapnel and all of you turn towards the camera as the explosion's going off behind you and you all fall over from the shockwave of the explosion. As you guys come to in just moments, all the bricks from the wall behind him have sort of collapsed in and the daylight is pouring into the room. As you pick yourself up out of the rubble, you see this little elven figure climbing out of the large mechanical mound. It's sparking and twitching. He's got a sword stuck in his, um, in his uh, sort of shoulder he's got a bullet wound in his chest covered in like burns he stumbles a bit and he's like I cannot be the ultimate hero I figured something out because I put you in all these brilliant traps I made myself the ultimate villain and villains they never win do they He falls down, impaling himself on one of the broken pieces of the Santa Claus robot. You all emerge out into the street of Darkhaven, covered in filth, wounds, marshmallow. You emerge. You hear the honking horns of the taxis and the cars speeding by in the streets. And you stumble a little bit as you are climbing through the rubble. And you guys look around and you see the pub that you had started in just basically across the road. You wander in, sit down at the booth. The halfling Brussel brings you guys some ales and says, 
Looks like you had a rough night. What happened? Great party, man. Great yeah. party. Did one of those escape rooms. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Bloody horse. Next time. Next time, check the uh, ales before you serve them. We uh, had some uh, green floaties in there. Hmm. You should, you should really charge extra for that. They're pretty good. Well, you guys passed out last night, and just before you did, the bard, he ordered you drinks, and we haven't seen him ever since. And Brussel looks over his shoulder towards the piano. It is empty, and it is never empty. On top of the piano, you just see this large golden ball ball helmet sitting there. I I suggest you just uh, hire a monkey next time. They're less hassle. I think he should be barred from future entry. (laughs) (laughs) As you guys sip your ales and have some food, you sit back listening to the sweet sounds of holiday time still in your little elf costumes and covered in filth and that is where we'll leave our mercenaries this Christmas Woo! thank you guys thank you for uh, downloading the show thank you for listening thank you for sharing it with a friend um, it's been pretty cool to be climbing down all your chimneys this time of year and having a look in your stockings and stuff um it's a bit unfortunate what, what some of you have gotten for Christmas. Um, uh, like I'm, I just want to say sorry that you got some shit presents this year. It's not my fault. I did switch the really good ones out with some some shitty ones that I might may have gotten from. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, so, um, what's the run sheet thing you usually do? Okay. Yeah, I already did that part. So it's me next. So yeah, check yeah, out yeah. our website. I haven't actually checked it out. I reckon we've got like a full on 79 episodes at this stage. But check out our sources. Check out our links. There's probably some really cool guys that have done some new stuff recently that you might want to check out. Sometimes that's us. But check out our <laughs> website, www.beyondthedice.com. During this festive season, if you have some time, if you're bored, if you just want to avoid some awkward conversations, you should totally just jump on our Instagram page. Jump on it at Beyond the Dice and check out what we got on there. Go through the pics. Hold up, Peter. I can guarantee if they go on our Instagram and they private message me, I can create some pretty awkward conversations on there if they want. Like, I'm just saying, it's like, I'm willing to do it. If you want awkward, you can do it. But they're already getting awkward conversations. They want to avoid the awkward conversations by checking out our Instagram page. That's true. Nah, nah. Double down, man. (laughs) Yeah, if you want to double down and getting awkward is like the, your thing, you know, you know, some people, some people like stockings and uh, some people like uh, hamburgers. Some people like being awkward. And there's also pictures of orcs. There are some pictures of orcs on there too, actually. You can also go and check out our Facebook page. You may have heard of Facebook, but we have a page there. It's Beyond the Dice, and you can see when we have new releases. We have alerts and posts there, and you can also just join join the chat on our Facebook page. Over you, Trev. The um, greatest gift that you can give this Christmas is Beyond the Dice, and if you can share that with a friend, um, that would be great. But one thing you can give us this Christmas is a five star review, if that's what you really think, um, and some kind words. Because we want to help share the good news that is beyond the dice this Christmas. Heck yeah. And if you would like to support the show, you can head on over to store.beyondthedice.com. If you want some sweet merch, there's some uh, sort of RPG and just D&D jumping in there. Stuff. That's not support. That's not supporting the show. That's supporting yourself because we've got some sweet clothing for you to wear if you go to our store. That's you support true. yourself. Treat yourself. 
it's good quality stuff. Like if you want to buy yourself a sweet t-shirt that has like Eldritch Blast or something on there uh, for Christmas, you can do that because that'd be much better than what I put back in your stocking. Um, you know, um, but if you can't afford like a t-shirt or like a, uh, a mask, cause they do have masks on there now for these COVID times, you can, you can get that. Um, but if you can't afford it, don't feel obligated. We totally understand, but you can support us by, um, by telling a friend, um, and it's like a free, it's like freeware, you know, you just, you just tell a friend, but just download and it. also if um, you've forgotten to get someone a present, just, just get one, one of those shirts from our store page. Like it's a great present. That's true. Um, and yeah, share us on social media. Have a good time. If you drink eggnog, do that. If you eat too much on Christmas and then feel so big that you don't want to move anymore and you just lay in a food coma for about three hours afterwards, then do that too. Enjoy yourself, but be safe. And make sure make sure you tip the guy on the piano because you never know. Yes, don't accept drinks from strangers, especially if they have little floaty green fizzy things in there. It's no good. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Merry holidays. Bye. Merry Christmas. Happy holiday.